time to kick off the 28th edition already of the Big Brain Belts. We've got a very fun community best of five to kick the night off with. 75 bucks on the line for two guys around 4,200, uh, 4, 4,300 MMR. This is Lino from Germany against Maddox from Korea. I've hosted a game. They say they are ready. Maddox is streaming as well. Feel free to post Maddox's stream link in the chat. Game 1 will be played on US West, Game 2 on Central, Game 3 on West, Game 4 on Central, and Game 5, fingers crossed that we get there, will be on West as well. The nerds are being very sweet to each other on Battle.net. Maddox is sending some hearts to Lino. Lino is sending some hearts to Maddox. I'm excited, guys. 75 bucks, 60 for the winner, 15 for the loser. Fun community, decent level StarCraft to kick the night off with. But obviously after the first best of five, things will get a lot more serious. I'm ready. The nerds are ready. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's get it on. One thing I would like to double check quickly is the sound. Uh, we'll do it like this. That's better. <laughs> Round one. Fight. In the top left side, we are looking at the main base of the man that you guys may have seen at IEM Katowice or at a Home Story Cup to help out with some translations. And he also does a, a decent amount of casting in Korean on his own channel. This is our one and only Korean Protoss, Caster Maddox. Streaming these games. Make sure to stop by his channel as well. Tell him hi. Tell him that Roddy sent you guys. Give him some love. Give him some hype. Uh, he was very excited and eagerly accepted the challenge. This man, we know him as someone who's always eager and excited to play some video games on this channel. I like to call him the reigning, defending, undisputed beer delivery champion in the world. Because that is what he has been doing for a long time. If you guys go to some of the uh, community events in Europe, whether it's a Dream Act Masters or obviously a Home Story Cup, I'm sure you've seen him. Because he's hard to miss. He's incredibly tall. He's incredibly passionate. Hailing from Bavaria, this is Lino. Opening the night off with Terran. But Lino is such a Terran player, guys, that he's one of these Terrans that plays a couple games with Protoss. And it's just like, oh, after seven years of playing Terran, my MMR with Protoss is the same after two games. None of that is true. We all know that is not true. But that's just the game kind of guy closed. that Lino is. As Lino is hitting us with the paws very early. And that is a false start to our big brain belts. I don't know if he's worried about uh, the ping or whatnot, but... Lino says that the map is weird. Well, the map is definitely not weird. Unless I hosted the wrong version, but like they have a UI bug. Yeah, that is possible. That's something that happens sometimes with game art, but oh. these nerds. Always fun. When you're ready to hop into some video games, anyone on NA and the servers are acting up? Well, these guys are on NA. Let's go again, but if it stays, we need to figure out unless this is normal. I don't know if Lino is worried about the map or if he's worried about the UI. But Game resumed. I mean, they they play a lot of StarCraft, so they should be familiar with a few of these things. The map is definitely not weird for me and you guys, and I think Maddox as well. So <laughs> hopefully it's not Lino's uh, laptop or something acting up. It's all good. So Lino is gonna kick the night off with Terran, but there is a good chance that he's gonna play some Protoss. He is actually... Oh, he's going... He's opening up at the build and never loses. Lino watches the stream a little too much. And apparently, we're going to kick things off with a 3 Rex. That is not a very fun way to start his best of five. As Maddox is going for a bit of a sim city against potential Reaper and also builds a shield better in the main base. So, I guess uh, the idea here for Maddox is just immediately run some units to the other side of the map and try to be a nuisance. And we're going to take the game from there. I don't know if this is going to lead into Stargate. I don't want to say it does, yeah. Stargate against 3-Rex is hard, unless you are very good at this video game. I think this is a difficult scenario for Maddox. Isn't this the map where got his tank stuck in an invisible war and water stream an hour ago? I, uh... Well, I did not see that, because I was casting, uh... <laughs> Basilisk in the WTL, but... I mean, Gresvon should be totally fine, guys. Who is Lino and why is he the next world, uh, world champion? I'm afraid that Lino's not going to be the next world champ as Maddox is uh, 
Adept just casually sneaks into the main base and that is problematic because Lino was going for three racks, I thought. Then it turned into four racks. But it's four racks Reaper with an expand. I think that uh, Lino is going for an overly complicated approach here. Lino's claim to fame in StarCraft 2 is that once upon a time he took one map of Harstam in the European Pro Tour Weekly. He got the best of Harstam with three or four Barracks Reaper of one base, I believe it was. And he was able to kill the first adapt, then got the Stalker, and then in the end got the job done. I do not recommend this strategy, guys. If you want to go Mass Reaper, that's obviously fine, but then you should proxy the Barrackses on the other side of the map and just try to win the game immediately on one base. I, I don't know the build where we expand and go for Barracks Reaper. <laughs> I know he's been asking Cuckoo, Baby Marine, and I think Clem or whoever it was for some strategies. I have a very hard time believing that this is a strategy that any of these guys recommended to him. As now we are also rallying our SCVs to the other side of the map. The wheels are coming off. What is happening? Lino. <laughs> what are we doing? Yes, he as well. I, do, I, do, I, do. <laughs> I don't know if it's the pressure, guys, to quote my brother. The pressure is getting to him, but... Maddox is uh, probably very confused about any everything that's happened so far in this game. First the pause. Then the map comments. Now SCV is being rallied to the other side of the map. And yeah, the, the four Rex Reaper. Now turning into five Rex. We are very familiar with five barracks, by the way, guys. But normally the five barracks are complemented by a factory and a starport. The just five barracks is one that I'm not that familiar with. But it's okay. We're gonna let these boys cook. We're gonna let them have some fun. And uh, we'll see where they take it. Of course, this is very different PvT than the next PvT we're going to see between Nikarok and Spots. And that's all good. We just want them to have fun. But I also still want it to look a little bit like StarCraft, you know? I'm not expecting any Clem Micro over here, and I'm not expecting Maddox to do his best Max Pax impression, but... <laughs> I would like to stay at least... I'd like to see at least the SCV stay where they are supposed to be. One thing is for sure, guys, is that Lino shouldn't flow too much money with these five barracks that are done this early. And he should also not lack any anti-air with the five marines that he can produce at a time. I wouldn't even hate it if he sneaks in a reactor. There are still a lot of marines running to the other side of the map. And I don't know how Menace defensive his army is looking. Well, no, we are supply blocked, but besides the supply block, I want to say this is looking all right. I think near the double battery... We should be able to survive against these marines with Stim. It'd be more terrifying if all these marines show up as well. Lino could kill an Oracle and he is paying attention. So kudos to Lino as he gets a few more shots off. But once the Colossus is out, Lino's army goes from... Oh, there's a lot of potential to... Okay, there's literally nothing we can get done here. <laughs> no Medivacs, no factory, no starport. There is our factory. The 6 minute 30 second factory. I want to find a Terran that gave Lino this build, guys. I saw Angie was in the chat. Angie, who came up with this? Was it you? <laughs> Did you tell your man to open up with five barracks, four barracks, Reaper into Marine only? <laughs> Where are we going, mate? All right. Maybe two, three minutes from here on out, it will just all be normal. Sometimes we just take a complicated route. To a very obvious suggestion as uh, Maddox has charged. And Maddox says, you know what? With charge, I am more than willing to fight these Marines away from my shield battery. Because I've got a Colossus in the mix as well. I'm going to say nice kiting here by Lino. Whenever Lino kites like this, though, he does start floating 700 minerals very quickly. Thanks. Oh, no, kill it then, Lino. Come on. You leave the Stalker with 2 HP, then you may as well just kill it. Those Marines were going to die anyway. So Maddox gets a decent cleanup. Yeah, it is obviously a bit awkward. I guess in a way the game is looking good for Lino. Because now he's building three Marauders at a time. And these Colossus, if they are exposed, these Marauders are going to have a field day. And Lino is also the one with the eBay. M plus one. The starting next game, by the way, guys. I will give you guys a little bit of a history on the, how Lino became the sweet, tall, German, passionate nerd that he currently is in this day and age. But we'll, we'll save that for when there is a lack of action. For now, Maddox is not a believer in uh, upgrades by the looks of it. He's got four gates. He's making four more gates. 
So we're gonna have eight gateways, Templar archives, and a couple of colossus. Could be very good against Bio, but if Lino can just get either a few widow mines to deal with the zealots, or just at least get a couple of medevacs to support your steam addiction, this is tricky. Without the medevacs, it's going to be very hard. Sentries actually have a decent amount of potential here. I like that missile turret. I think that missile turret is very useful to keep at least the Colossus at bay. Lino is going to have to micro very well and he needs to avoid catastrophic force fields. I like how Lino's first reaction to a Proto's army is pull the boys. <laughs> okay, I like the early spling. Oh my goodness, what an engagement. Okay, yeah, actually that was very good the way he set it up. Lino has been taking notes. For a split second there, guys. Lino looked like he was... Liquid clam. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful nice little concave here all the way from the top right to the bottom left side of the screen I like how there is an army that's way more tacked up and Lino went from pulling the boys to dropping a 4th CC right in the face with that army little question ball man I'll keep our prism in the main base okay and at the same time guys he's gonna send that army forward one more time Lino is grabbing 300 supply to deal with 3 zealots and he kind of forgot about that big army. Now Lino's taking it a little bit more serious again. Force fields could go down here. I wouldn't hate a couple force fields, Maddox. He's finding good economic damage, but he is bleeding out a lot of units. There we go with the force fields. And Lino is still thinking about chasing, but will not chase in the end. One uh, Rambo Zealot, guys. Eight kills, not bad. Lino left a couple of Marauders to deal with this Zealot, but he decided to shoot at his own reactor. Now that happens to the best of us. In the end, the game goes on, and at least we gotta give these guys kudos, because 10 minutes in, we are video gaming. And it's hard to say who we really like it for, because I think with the double star for double reactor, four Vikings at a time, and now even Ghost on the way, at least I think Maddox is gonna have a hard time keeping Colossus alive. Then again, Lino is gonna have a hard time splitting against Disruptus. <laughs> yeah, the double Disruptor is a problem. It's, a pro it's something that we talk about in high-level video gaming. Now 4,200 MMR becomes an even bigger problem. Yeah. I'll, I'll take a look at it later, uh, Rakio. I can't really do that in the middle of our showmate series on the Friday night. As we have four best of fives to make our way through. So, <laughs> Lino has two medevacs. Two medevacs into six Vikings. You know what? I don't even hate it. To get an answer against these Colossus is important because right now his ground army is definitely way better than the ground army of Maddox. Now that can obviously change real quick if a purification Nova goes off. The army starts flowing with each other. War Prism soaks up the first volley. Lino with a sexy move command. <laughs> the first Nova gets a very big hit. The second one gets a very big hit as well. And Lino is now not stimming. At least the Vikings are, I want to say, doing all right. But now in the end, they're not doing anything. And yeah, guys, now we understand where all the frustration comes from for the 4,200 Terran players on the ladder. When they talk about Disruptors being too good, Protoss being stupid and noob-friendly. That was a painful fight. If you take that exact same fight and you let Clem and Skillers play it, that is actually a completely different fight, and I actually think that the Terran could win it. But in the end, Maddox get the slam dunk victory. Lino with some move command and a little bit of focus fire all over the place. We'll be forced to tap out after the Novas took out 40 supply each. GG, our Korean Protoss. Caster Maddox takes the one elite. The man is streaming. <laughs> that was a... That was a game, guys. Let's not forget how that started. As it started off with four barracks, the Reaper fast expand. It's not a build. Game two will be played on Ancient. I'm gonna go ahead and host it with the mod. Wait, I need to set my server as well. Uh, that is the one thing that's a bit frustrating about this, but it's okay. Uh, central. Maybe I should have just played everything on Central. Lina says the turning the graphics down help, but I don't know what he had. Uh, I don't know what problem you have, but yeah, if it's a laptop and it's set to ultra, change it to medium. Mm -hmm. All right, Indy is here as well now.
maybe there is a ch like if you got a different computer there is a good chance that maybe the game just got installed and that all the settings were pushed to the max and obviously if the laptop is not good enough to run that you got bros computer because with laptop was also fine i don't know i don't know but i can't hmm. Alright, Lino is now going to leave the lobby. This is going great, guys. <laughs> Maybe uh, just fixing some of the graphic settings and then often you actually have to reconnect to Battle.net to figure it out. What is it with Lino and being our first match of a tournament and things going wrong? This is starting to be a reoccurring theme. Okay, he's already back. Probably just had to restart the game after he changed some graphic settings and... Hopefully we are good to go here for game two. He said he indeed restarted the game. Said sorry, he's ready. Is Maddox ready? I want to take a look at Maddox's stream quickly. Maddox, go go. I think he's all tapped. It's gonna be buzzing a little. It's always exciting to play like an official match where you know people are watching, and there is a, a little reward on the line. Obviously, seventy-five dollars for this best of five. 60 for the winner, 15 for the loser. Maddox takes the 1-0 lead, but obviously it's a game that could have gone either way. And I also think that Lino made life a little bit harder on himself than it had to be uh, with the weird opening. I know that he's fond of Reapers, and I don't mind the Reaper cheese. But you can't really go Reapers into the fast expand into 4 barracks Reaper. That's, that's just not a thing, guys. Hopefully everything is perfect with settings here and we can just go ahead and enjoy game 2. Round 2 Fight. In the bottom left side, we are looking at the main base of our Korean translator, caster, streamer, player. This is Caster Maddox. That is his official title. I can probably just call him Maddox, but he often goes by Caster Maddox, so we're we'll wrong with it. In the top right side of Ancient, we are looking at the main base of the man who I ran into many years ago in a StarCraft tournament in Barcelona. He was there as a fan, I was there as a caster. We hang out. I was like, hey, this guy's really cool. We exchanged some, I don't know, Instagram details. Stayed in touch and many years later became great friends. And now he's kind of the savior of community StarCraft in Europe. Organizes stuff, helps people out at Homestory Cup. He's done it all. Been there, done that. He is a great member of this community. Our very tall German friend, uh, Lino. Incredibly passionate. Not very good. But that's okay. <laughs> Not everyone has to be good. He can, he can handle a bit of banter, by the way, guys. He lives for the banter, so don't worry. What is Maddox up to here? Not one, but two probes are scouting for proxies. So if uh, Lino's game plan was to get into Maddox's head, then he's crazy. Maybe that worked. Maddox is kind of destroying his own economy here by sending out these two probes ultra early. Especially because he didn't even, like, check if something weird was happening. And Lino gets the eBay block off. Well, how will Maddox deal with it? Is he just going to expand elsewhere? He's going to build a cell up. It's going to take a long time. Ooh, now the probe's not paying attention. Meanwhile, Maddox builds a pylon on the other side of the map. I wonder if he's going to let that finish or not. If we are waiting for three probes to kill this engineering base, it's going to take a long time. In the end, the pylon got cancelled. And Maddox did scout and the Reaper came out. This is some solid video gaming. Maddox with the Chrono on the Stalker, but he was temporarily supply blocked. That has been taken care of though. Pulls all the boys, gets the SCV. First blood. The little victories, that counts. Maddox, you need to leave one probe on the low ground if you want to expand. I, I thought we pulled all these probes because we want to expand. Does he not want to expand? He does kind of want to expand. He will expand. Now Lino feels that it's his turn to start scouting around. We'll once more go for uh, some sort of a 3 rack setup. This could be quick DTs on the side of Maddox. But every Terran in Diamond League or Low Master has been traumatized by the Invisible Boys. So a very quick eBay goes down. The Reaper is going to see that the Stalker and the Zealot are making their way to the other side of the map. I do think Lino should be fine here. Like four marines and a reaper if you can defend on the high ground. 
That shouldn't be too hard. Melok slapping Lino. Nah, game almost close. It really could have gone either way. And apparently Lino had some struggles. I haven't seen him mention these struggles in game two, so I hope it's fixed. Reaper is leading the charge. Can we micro a Reaper backwards a little bit? The answer is yes. And it's going to be blink, by the way, on the side of Maddox. I was kind of feeling DTs. I thought they loved DTs. No, it wasn't the mouse. It was the map. <laughs> I don't really know <laughs> what it meant. He said the mouse is bu the, the map is buggy. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know. I cast a lot of but I've never seen someone complain about the map being buggy. <laughs> that is. User interface, sure, PC, sure, mouse, sure, but the map. <laughs> I would have asked you, by the way, Lethal, to play in this, but since Maddox is Protoss and you're Protoss as well, I didn't really want to have PvP uh, as our opening match. I wanted to have different matchups, so that's why I asked Lima. But if in the future there is a Fear Dragon or a Beomolf that wants to play once, uh, I'll keep an eye on you, Lethal. Maybe a lethal against Dave Testa. These two stalkers are doing a pretty decent job here and getting plenty of hits off. I'm feeling the micro here by Maddox. This is all very clean. I think Lino playing a rather dangerous game trying to do all of this without a bunker. Well, Lino's kind of getting bopped here, guys. Maddox so needs to be careful. Obviously, Stim is done. Especially if Lino would have stimmed there immediately. Now he's got Marauders. Are we going to see that big Stim? Nope. Lino rather just keeps on bleeding out a few Marines. Good job, though, by Maddox. Very solid. Killed six Marines. Now he needs to be careful, Maddox. <laughs> we jinxed him. Right when I said good job by Maddox, he's like, no, Roddy. I'll show you a bad job. I'll move Command 2 Stalkers into his army. Look at that. <laughs> this army. What? What? Lino, what are we doing? What, what am I looking at? What am I looking at, guys? Are we pulling the boys or not? What, what, what is this? Yes, we are pulling the boys. We weren't, then we were, then we weren't. So Lino is just gonna all in Maddox here with a couple of Marines and Marauders and a very weird random SCV pool. This is a slow warp in pylon, by the way. Maddox needs to keep an eye on this. He needs this pylon to warp in here. These are fast warpings, these are slow warpings. This pylon is too far away from the Nexus. Maddox sees his army and he says, oh yeah, give me a piece of that, Lino. As he uses World's earliest overcharge, <laughs> things are a little bit out of sync. Uh, Lino with some move command is going to fight. She'll probably run away from the battery for a split second. It's a lot of running by Lino, not a whole lot of battling. Does at least kill 17 SCVs. Also loses 10 probes in... or 10 SCVs in the process. He killed 17 probes. Still a couple of Marines and Marauders left. Battery is out of juice. Not a stim. Yes, no, maybe. I have no idea what I'm looking at. Marauders turn around. They want to lead the charge. No concussive shells is a little bit painful. Would have definitely nailed Lino a few more kills if he had concussive shells there. We have video gaming, guys. I like how Maddox just immediately pulled all the probes. He's like, if you're gonna pull the SUVs, I'm pulling the probes. <laughs> In the end, Maddox makes it up to the point where he gets the Colossus up. Technically, he's in trouble. It's two base against two base. Lino's got plus one. Marines and Marauders with Stim should be better than Gateway units without any upgrades. However, Maddox has one Immortal, one Colossus. As we have a forward blink there by uh, by Maddox, that was a bit painful. And Lino is chasing out pretty far, but he is making his way through the majority of these stalkers. In the end, the Marauders trying to kill the Sentry. That's the one unit that I don't think the Marauders should have been shooting at. Stalkers good, Immortals good, Colossus good, not the Sentry. The Marines need to kill the Sentry. And now Lino is actually in uh, all sorts of trouble. That was his entire army. Lino just lost his entire army in the center of the map. And now Maddox with one Colossus, no Turbo Lens, three Stalkers, and a Sentry and an Immortal. This is casually walking into the natural of our German Terran. Who is trying to go up to three bases, but... And that's gonna take a little while. Maddox has snuck out a War Prism as well. We're all over the shop here, guys, in Game 2. Well, it's kind of in Game 1 as well, but especially in Game 2. But it does seem that one Big Daddy Colossus and one Immortal, by the way. This Immortal has been an absolute hero for Maddox. I think that's going to be good enough. There is an Observer in the mix. The Barrier does get tacked. And uh, with that Observer here, it's easy for Maddox to just pick up that uh, Widowmite. A couple of Stalkers. The Stalkers at least have Blink, so there's a little bit of micro potential. But at this point, we don't really need to micro anymore. 
Lino with the single G is forced to tap out and Maddox takes the 2-0 lead. I thought, I thought Maddox did good. Maybe it was a bit unnecessary to pull the probes that far forward. If you act and the overcharge was very early, right? But I understand it. It's the nerves. It's the panic that kicks in. Uh, yeah. I, other than that, Maddox did well. Especially that Immortal was solid. What he definitely needed to do was, I think, keep that Immortal alive or... Try to get concussive shells on the marauders because if you get concussive shells then it's a bit easier to tag the stalkers and kill them tag the immortal and kill it but this was uh it was random but it was fun <laughs> game three is going to be played on royal blood i'm gonna go ahead and host with mod and create lobby i'll do central game three Get it Maddox taking the 2 0 lead. I'm trying to get everybody in. Our second series of the night, guys, will be between two players that have 6 KMMR, so they're gonna be obviously very good. I felt that this for the best of 5. 10 minutes into the first game, I thought it had all the potential in the world. And then it just ended. And now that second game happened, and now I'm like, oh, is this it? I hope we get more. I'm ready for more. I want more. Um. Races and ready. Maddox though, 2 0 lead, that's obviously very nice for him. I think he's playing solid. It, it seems that his game plan is get some of these power units out for Protoss, whether it's the Immortal or the Colossus, stay near a battery and wait for the Terran to attack him. And that is working out. Lino says, go, go. Ask Maddox, go, go. Ready, ready. All right. Well, uh, Cabanagius. Recently, Lino did take a map of Harston in the European Pro Tour Weekly. So, unless you took a map of Harston, I don't think you can really make fun of him, right? Is, is that isn't that how this works? <laughs> Lino took a map of Harston. Lino is a warrior. He's played some good games. He's uh, on average 4.3k, I would say. Um, but it obviously depends a little bit. He's very busy with the company. He's busy with life. So he cannot always play as much as he would like to play. I think if it's up to that man, he's got enough passion to play StarCraft all day, every day. I know he's been busy lately. Today hasn't been his best performance yet, but hopefully he can step it up here in Game 3. Round 3. Fight! In the bottom left side of Royal Blood, we are looking at the main base of the man who's down 0-2. He is our reigning, defending, undisputed beer delivery champ in the world. And he said, all right, that's it. I'm done. I'm not playing Terran anymore. We're playing Protoss, baby. This is Lino. That's it. And that's all. In the top right side of Royal Blood, we are looking at the main base of the man who is aware of the fact that his opponent is playing Protoss and not Terran now. He's up 2-0, hailing from Korea, streaming these games on twitch.tv slash caster underscore Maddox, I believe it is. If I got this wrong, please correct me. This is Maddox. Maddox gets a quick rope into the main base of Lino. And he will probably think this is all looking very weird. I don't know if Maddox is, uh, nah, he's probably not familiar with any game that Lino has played, but this is a way that Lino likes to open, because Lino loves to play Phoenix Immortal, just like uh, I do. We go full Protoss Mac, then you get a second pile in here or here, and then you get a battery, and then you're fine. There is a good chance that Maddox will open up with two adapts, because he will look at this and be like, huh, if I shade two adapts into his main base, can I just kill the probes and walk away with 60 bucks over here? It's not that easy. If Lino does things correctly, he shouldn't take any damage from the first two adapts. But I don't know if Lino can do things correctly. As sweet and passionate as Lino is, he can get a little emotional as well. And I don't think I've ever seen Lino not be fuming after he's down 0-2 in something. So, there's a chance that he messes up. Maddox is gonna go for the two adapts. And this is where it's very important for Lino that he gets the shield battery in his main base because then the idea is one adept can just fire away at the other adept of maddox and that phoenix can temporarily lift one adept and obviously to kill probes two adepts need to fire at the same time so if the phoenix lifts one only one probe at a time can fire 
Uh, this, this should actually be doable. Who is the Lino? Lino is a 4200 MMR Terran slash Protoss, who is just a community member of StarCraft 2. The big brain bouts, the main event, the co-main event, it's always very competitive, high level. We try to have some fun with the opening matches. So we try to get players like uh, Fear Dragon or Statfest or Biomorph to play. And today I wanted to give Maddox an opportunity to play. Since he's in a kind of awkward MMR, I decided to go with someone who I generally know is at this MMR. And that is Lino, who is a good community member. He's a very passionate Soccer 2 guy. Don't lift too early, Lino. Okay, I want to say he lifted a little bit early, but it's okay. It's still good. Target fire with the Adepts is good. This looks already a lot better, by the way, on the side of Lino. Needs to build another pilot. He's already done that. Yeah, maybe Lino, his Protoss, really is better than his Terran. <laughs> this, this looks... <laughs> this looks way better for Lino than uh, the Terran openings. He's got an Immortal. He's got Phoenix already. He's got a Zealot in production. He can start expanding. Maddox is going Blink into Expand. But to defeat Phoenix... Immortal with Blink Stalkers is very difficult. It's not impossible. You need to basically out expand the style and kind of play like in a aggressive yet defensive manner where you focus on getting a big economic lead for yourself. If you're working with even economies, Phoenix Immortal is way better than Stalkers with Blink. Nino's actually making a very early move out here. Not something I would necessarily recommend, but in this scenario, it is going to work out by the looks of it. Obviously, the shield battery has some good potential there. If we want to send the phoenixes... Mm -hmm. What Lino wants to do, if he wants to fight here, he needs to kill the battery first. He always needs to kill the battery first. Yeah, he can also maybe fight with the Immortal and the Zealot in the natural and shade the... Uh, and that's into the main base. Phoenixes should not live more than one probe at a time. If he wants to harass, he cannot live two probes. If he lifts two probes, the battery will just heal. He's lifting a random stalker. It's it's a kill. Not bad, I guess. Ah, now we need to... No, fly away. Fly away, Lino. Once Blink is done, it's going to become a little bit more difficult for the Phoenixes to find a lot of damage. Not impossible. What would really help Lino is if he would have just fired up an Observer a while ago. He went double immortal, which is not bad, but having an ops is so freaking nice if you're playing this style. Because that will give you the idea of where the stalkers are. And then you can outmaneuver the stalkers with the phoenix. There is, uh, there is still some hope that we have a proper series on our hands. Because this game does look a lot better for Lino. But I've also seen him play this style where he makes life a little bit overly complicated for himself. And it's obviously a lot easier to aim move with 20 Zealots and 20 Stalkers than to play Phoenix, Immortal, Disruptor or something properly. It's a lot of units that require great positioning and good spell casting. Well, as long as he's up in economy and he's working with a better army, it's obviously looking fine. What Lino really needs to do is make them certain that Maddox does not go up to three bases too quickly. Maddox is dropping a robo in a forge here. Like what Lino wants with his army, since his army is stronger in a straight up battle. Okay, I wouldn't necessarily attack into the natural right now unless you are convinced that you can lift the sentries. Uh, okay. There is potential here for Lino, but he needs to be very careful. The target fire needs to be good. And he, if he gets in range of the battery, he needs to kill that battery. Phoenixes need to lift the sentries. They go for stalkers instead. Oh, you need to kill the battery. Lino, you kind of need to kill the battery. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? All right, he goes for the battery now. Now we really need to lift these sentries. The phoenix is not really doing a whole lot. All right, he uh, completely messed this attack up, guys. There is one more immortal showing up. Lift the sentries, please. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's a bit of a trade, I guess, in the end. At least a lot of the Phoenix survived, not quite all of them. <sighs> I don't want to say that Lino couldn't have done anything worse there, but... It was, uh, it was very unfortunate, the way that went. There are a few things that are very important there, if you want to play this style of Lino. And that is that, at first, you make sure that the Immortals only shoot at armored units. 
So if there are three sentries in the mix, you want to lift these sentries with your phoenix. Your phoenix deal double damage against sentries. Uh, we'll save that for a rainy day. Lino should be fine here, guys. Don't get force fielded, obviously, into your main base. He's going to pull the probes. Lino's army is powerful enough here to fight without probes, if you ask me. But he wants to fight with probes, so we're going to pull the probes. The immortals, you can see how well they are doing if they're just shooting at the stalkers. It's a hold. That's a good hold. There's a void right now as well. Man. Like, Phoenix don't deal double damage against stalkers. They're not bad against stalkers, but they're not great. So what you want to do is lift the sentries, kill those, and then your immortals will always fire at the, at the uh, units that are armored, and they will deal bonus damage. If you know there is one battery, you need to kill that battery immediately. If you want to take that fight, you cannot possibly fight units and then try to kill the battery afterwards when it's already healing a whole bunch. And lifting the stalkers the way we did, that doesn't really make too much sense. But it's still a very competitive game, and if anything, I want to say it, it looks alright for Lino. Uh, but he does need to go up to three bases. The one thing I'm a bit worried about here for our German Protoss is that his army doesn't scale that well if the armies get a whole lot bigger. Meanwhile, Maddox, he's making the correct decision. He has dropped the Templar Archives, he's got four gases, so now going Zealot, Stalker, Archon, and that changes everything. Archons are amazing against the Immortals, amazing against Void Rays, amazing against the Phoenix. And Lino has a whole lot of probes here. He, he kind of knows, right? Yeah, he should know. There's potential for the Phoenixes right now to kill a bunch of probes in the main base. As long as he doesn't live four at a time. And he doesn't just lose one Phoenix there, but that's acceptable. Not great. And Lino should really expand, though. There's two adapts shading into the main base. Lino has an army. In Dutch, there is an expression. Sustana by is a Kaikudena, which means they're standing there and they're looking at it. Watch it unfold in front of their very eyes. In the end, they will uh, take some action. The Phoenixes of Lino are going to reveal the fact that there is a pylon near his uh, main base and natural. He's building Colossus now. That's obviously not bad, but like one Colossus is not going to make the difference. We're going to need a little bit more than a single Colossus. Ah, poor Lino. Because that attack had so much potential. He could have just walked into the natural, sniped the battery, lift the sentries. And even if he doesn't win the game there, guys, he would have killed 10, 15 probes and the entire army and the phoenixes would have survived. So that was a little bit of a missed opportunity, but he's still in it. He's got plus one air weapons. I, I wouldn't hate fixing our gas here, mate, because we have probes on minerals for days. Uh, we don't quite have the gas saturation that my sweet baby dreams are made of. Let's go ahead and expand, amigo. Ah, please fix your gas. It's very painful. Because all he wants to do is build Colossus. But to build Colossus, you need gas. We are going to leapfrog our way with cannons and batteries into a third base. <laughs> a couple of zealots of Maddox with charge will find a bit of damage. Lino, his phoenixes are going to go for a couple of probes in the main. Natural, first natural, then main. Seems like we're stacking the Phoenix up for a recall. That is exactly what he's going to do. These three Zealots just very casually killed eight probes. That is obviously a bit of a problem. Especially since the Zealots are still alive. And meanwhile, two or three Phoenixes did go down. Immortals deal like 20 damage a shot against uh, Archons and Zealots. They deal 50 damage a shot against Stalkers. It's a very big difference. Lino still has a good chance here, though. Because, how I said earlier, his army doesn't scale well. If he gets enough buffer for the Colossus, and he gets cannons and batteries near a potential fight, then I do think Immortal Colossus is a god-tier army. He's gonna have to micro a little bit. Do we trust that Terran guy? Do we trust the Terran to be able to micro a little? But yeah, with cannons and batteries, Lino's army is gonna do great against Maddox's army. Even if he's down an upgrade, it's really not that big of a deal. Without cannons and batteries, positioning is just everything. It's going to be very close. It seems that Maddox is gearing up for a potential attack. We see that War Prism halfway done. Getting a few more Archons. This, this army can be a little bit derpy though, attacking into static defenses. 
I, I don't know. It's very hard to call this game. I want to say that I think I like it for Lino, but it's impossible to make a accurate prediction because I don't know what they're going to do in the fight. Like These are basically two boxes in the ring that are throwing uppercuts, but there is a 30% chance that they knock themselves out. That is the way that these uh, fights in general play out. Self-harm is a real problem in these games. Often a move and hands of the keyboard is better than what they try to do. <laughs> but we're about to see. We are about to see, guys. As Lino drops the Fleet Beacon, the Phoenix aren't here, but he does have cannons. He's got batteries. He's got Colossus. Maddox sees it. And Maddox says, you know what? I want a piece of that army. Lino has some Void Rays. He's got... <laughs> yeah, that's actually a very good army. It's a Wings of Liberty army, but it's a good army, guys. If you guys are ever sad that you joined StarCraft a little bit later, don't worry. Lino is bringing back the glory days of Wings of Liberty. Now he's moving forward. I want to say that was a little bit ambitious. <laughs> now the Immortals are having a very hard time. Not quite sure what they want to shoot at. And Lino with the 12 on the minerals, I want to say he's in a bit of trouble. He was doing fine until he wasn't. And the Archons are so good in a wide open area. Stalkers are going to try to blink forward and they will go for a Colossus. They'll get one Colossus. Will they get the rest? The Immortal Target Fire, I want to say, is decent. But there is an Immortal in the mix for Maddox as well. 77 supply against 1 OT. Lino's trying to spend his money with some extra Void Rays and extra Colossus. Ah, uh, these Stalkers, if they blink forward, that is it. If Lino didn't chase out that army, guys, he was doing totally fine. But standing there in the center, oh, well, it's not it. The Immortals were a bit overwhelmed. They weren't quite sure what they wanted to shoot at. And it seems that our Korean Protoss Maddox is going to walk away with the 60 bucks here. And the Dove in the opening match of the Big Brain Bouts number 28. Maddox with a 3-0 over Lino. Two guys with 4,300 MMR on different services. And I guess on different services, I want to say. And I guess Korea is superior to Europe, guys. At the 4.3k MMR region. GG's. Thanks, Lino, for playing and doing your best. Thanks to Maddox for playing. Obviously, guys, if you want to say congrats, I'm sure he's very happy. Let's go ahead and get some good vibes. Because I'm sure that he's happy. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Uh -huh. Thank you, Dave. Is yeah. Considering the fact that he has a lot of immortals in, in his... Uh, natural i think it, it would have been much better to go carriers <laughs> maddox is doing some analysis carriers could have been a play but the man did not quite have money for uh carriers posted the the link in the chat guys go ahead and show him some love tell him you said hi you said carriers carriers were a play but i don't think it's carriers that made the difference there lino was doing fine with the current army because colossus immortal void ray will win down the line but it wasn't quite at the level yet that you can just expose the army and run into the center of the map. So that, that is where it went wrong. Obviously, these games, there's a lot of little things that could have gone different either way. But it was fun. We had some fun in game one. We had some fun in game three. Game two was a little bit undeserved. Hmm. GG. Uh, or game two was a bit underwhelming, rather. Right? Not undeserved, but underwhelming. Uh, so Maddox, our 4.3k Korean Protoss gets the job done. He gets 60 bucks. Lino will still get 15. And I'm sure he will put that money to good use at the next Homestar Cup.